the sad reality is when the world looked at a young leader in 2018, April 2018, there was a hope. Many of us felt like, okay, he's going to really be leader for the people. Turned out to be uh, the worst uh, in the history of Ethiopia, actually. So I was born in the Durgi era. I left the country because of a civil war. Uh, and I never thought in my lifetime as a, a Tigran American to see this kind of atrocity. Uh, it's not an allegation. It's actually a reality that my people, the Tigray people in Tigray, have faced rape, the atrocity throughout the region in Tigray for nearly four months now, since November 4th, 2020. Uh, electricity has been shut off. Corridor has been completely shut off. Ethiopia, Isas uh, Afwerki joined Ethiopia, which was a rivalry between Tigray and Eritrea from previous wars and whatnot, but not necessarily when, you, when we look at deeply within the people, I don't think that was the issue. I think more the issue was the elite within Eritrea, within the Amhara, which is they're called the Amhara militia, and then you have the Amhara fauna, that simply felt that Tigray unity was a threat to their, uh, uh, their ability to control the region and to simply have one dictator in Addis Ababa. And in return, 500,000 troops were deployed to Tigray, uh, Somalian troops, Eritrean troops, Amhara militia, Amhara fauna, the federal troops from various regions of Ethiopia to just one region. The sad reality is Tigray is and was part of Ethiopia. So to have an outsider and to mention also United Arab Emirates, an Arab country that has no borders with Ethiopia, with Eritrea, with anything in Africa, deploy drones to kill civilians within Tigray. Truth is stranger than fiction especially when you consider the fact that Abiy Ahmed, uh, the prime minister of Ethiopia, received a Nobel Peace Prize, and now the world is looking at Ethiopia as it relates to a possible genocide. It's hard to reconcile the two in one individual. And what's, in, what's very interesting is the fact that Abiy Ahmed traveled to Eritrea uh, at a time where there had been a, a long on, ongoing conflict between the two nations and they made peace. At the same time, you would wonder what were they discussing because now you have Eritrean troops inside of Ethiopia attacking Ethiopian citizens. This war has turned into a humanitarian crisis on levels that are, have been unseen for a long time. These are some of the concerns that we're hearing and most disturbingly are the um, actual reports that are coming out that are documenting massacres, genocide, rape, starvation, um, the attacking of fleeing residents that are seeking refuge, hospitals that are being destroyed, medicines uh, that are being taken and just an entire humanitarian crisis. This is not being documented by me, Brother Jeff. This is being said by Doctors Without Borders, UNICEF, um, the Amnesty International. You have President Biden um, calling for a stop of the war. You have Vice President uh, Kamala Harris talking about a grave concern for humanitarian abuses. And so the world is watching. Well, the, Tigr the Tigray crisis, obviously, is very sad. It's very unfortunate. It is based on uh, Abiy Ahmed of Ethiopia, who was an interim prime minister uh, up until uh, May of 2020, or up until, like, actually uh, October. But in May, election was supposed to be held in Ethiopia. The prime minister refused to hold an election, which is against the constitution. Uh, regional states, then, are within their uh, uh, national constitution to uphold a regional election, which is what Tigray did in Makale, in the state of uh, Tigray, which is the northern part of Ethiopia. So upon the election, the result was clear. Dr. Debrazian uh, has won the election to lead the regional state of Tigray in Ethiopia, which does not have any interference with the federal system. Uh, for the past two and a half, almost three years, the Ethiopian government, however, uh, has been plotting and preparing to uh, attack the Tigray leadership simply because he deemed them as a threat to his 
dictatorship uh, role in Ethiopia to have one party, one uh, uh, government without a voice of the people in the country uh, in Ethiopia. Here we are four months into it and uh, things have not improved. There's been a complete communication blackout in the state of Tigray. There have been massacre after massacre after massacre within the state of Tigray. Our families, whenever they can get access and are able to get information out and video out and phone calls out, have called and told us as much. No one has been listening up until recently. There have been uh, investigations by CNN, by Amnesty International, um, and other groups as well. The Guardian did a whole um, story about their investigation into the massacres in Tigray and essentially have proven the things that our families have been telling us for several months. And that is that hundreds of people, hundreds and hundreds, in one case, over 700 people, were killed in a church at one time. Um, and that's just one example. That was the Aksum massacre. The statement we came out with Amnesty International is not surprising because that was being told uh, numerous times uh, uh, with even there's a blockout information, there was blockout internet phone lines by the government Ethiopia purposely from the Tigrayan region when they start uh, launching this atrocity to their own citizens. So uh, Amnesty International even came late <laughs> to say that because uh, the Human Rights Watch has already put out that statement earlier, earlier on, but the Ethiopian government denying and also kind of blocked for any witness to, to come and to tell the story. So the Amnesty Station Inter uh, International took a huge step to go and even interviews those who are fleeing the Tagaru uh, region. Um, and those, some of them are in a refugee camp and they, that's like a fresh statement. So Amnesty, Amnesty International statement, this is not the end, this just is the beginning. The movement, the Tagaro diaspora, including myself, we pressure, we built, we mounted facts, not just like going out and just crying, but bringing out facts, what's happening on the ground, which forced the United Arab Emirates to finally stop bombing uh, Tigray using drones, but also finally the U.S. is stepping up now with the new administration. But the calculation was you do it right the day after the election, which was November 3rd. We know that we had a U.S. election and the attack took place to distract the world from seeing the massacre, what's happening. Aksum is an example. 800 or so people have been taken out of the, uh, the um, uh, Aksum Zion church and executed. So uh, this is, you know, again, it's not an allegation. It is an atrocity. 4.5 million people in Tigray are in need of immediate humanitarian assistance. This is not my word. These are words from the word community, such as Human Rights uh, Watch, uh, the United Nation, uh, BBC, I mean, I can go on and on. Like, uh, well-known like media organizations have reported this over and over. Uh, the response from the world community has been extremely like slow and very sad. But more and more now that we are seeing the U.S., uh, Europe, European countries are spe not only speaking up but potentially, you know, headed towards an action. And that's really what we at this point we're not talking about what what Tigray means, where Tigray is located, whether or not there's genocide. That is proven fact. But the reality is that are we going to see another Rwanda or are we going to step up and say enough is enough? Because when we saw what happened in Rwanda, 800,000 civilians were killed. And President Clinton, I remember, I was in high school at that time in California. He said, this will never, ever happen again on our watch. And I think for America, for my beloved country, this country, as an American myself, I want Americans to understand what's happening in Tigray is real. Young girls, as young as a seven have been reported being gang raped by Eritrean Amhara militia and federal troops throughout Tigray. So these are the facts. So uh, therefore, I think you know when I hear uh, a certain you know uh, media outlets like being like cautious, it's great. But the fact is, let's open the corridor. Let's allow humanitarian aid to go to Tigray so that the atrocity that's happening in the villages that are not reported actually is is worse than what we are hearing. Personally, you know, I have, you know, family. I have people throughout the region that, you know, they would figure out a way to contact us. I'm not gonna get specific for their safety, but I can tell you that in many villages throughout Tigray, they've taken out like 
They've eaten all their cattle, which is most farmers. They survive on that. That's their, that's their wealth, right? And so therefore, you know, eating their foods. And if they can't eat, if they can't take it with them, they're destroying it. They're killing the, even animals that they cannot eat because they're, you know, the Eritrean troops are moving from one area to another. Towers now, within, within the last like five days, most towers in, throughout the village in Tigray are dismantled, taken to Eritrea again. So what does that do? It completely eliminates communication. So even though Abiy Ahmed, with all the pressure, just opened the electricity just briefly now, and internet was back, I mean, not internet, but uh, telephone network was back, Eritrea just deployed more troops in the last two, three days into Tigray, while the United States of America says, Eritrean troops and Amhara militia must le leave Tigray. What is Eritrea doing? Eritrea is actually deploying more troops to Tigray. Eritrea is actually committing more crimes as, we, as I speak to you today. And it is March 1st, 2021. So just yesterday, the United States government, the State Department released a strong statement saying that Eritrean troops and Amhara militia must le leave Tigray. And just now, there's more troops from Eritrea being deployed. Again, these kind of stories, these are not just stories, these are fact. And the United States government has access to satellite images from orbit through NASA. So our stories, what we are sharing, what we're talking about, are back with many other evidence in addition to the NASA that I'm just mentioning. Trump did a lot of damage. Trump's authoritarian, populist, fascist approach to everything rubbed off on a lot of leaders, including Abiy Ahmed. A lot of what Abiy does around, you know, anytime information comes out that he doesn't like, he calls it fake news. Um, his idea that uh, he can do no harm and that he's the only one who can fix everything. I'm the one who can do it all. All of this was influenced by Trump. His whole make Ethiopia great again, mega influenced by Trump. Trump did a lot of damage, a lot of damage um, on an international level in terms of empowering these type of fascist leaders all over the world. So when this war started, it was actually election night. It was election night in America. And I remember uh, feeling relieved that, you know, when it seemed like Trump was going to lose. And then within hours, learning that war had started in Tigray and my, you know, and, and then all of a sudden all the same worries that I had before and even worse, you know, came back. So I am happy that uh, Biden won. It is, it, it brings a lot of hope because uh, prior to, there were, there were issues and conflicts and things that were happening that Trump kept turning a blind eye to. Um, and I knew that his administration would not be able to help us if, if things got to, to where they are now. So there's some hope around Biden and, and what his team, Anthony Blinken, and some of these other leaders in Biden's administration are saying. Uh, their, their frequency has stepped up. And so they've been saying, we're worried, we're worried, we're worried, we're concerned. You know, um, their tone and frequency has definitely stepped up. But we need action. We need people on the ground. We need to be able to get to the people. We need a barrier. We need someone between the Eritrean troops and the Tigrayan people. Um, we need someone between the Ethiopian federal troops and the Tigrayan people. We need someone to put their presence there. So I'm hopeful, uh, especially with the speed uh, that, things are, that things are taking now. But every day is a day too long. We're already four months into this. We have no idea really what the true carnage is. Um, and I mean, how long, how long, how long could you be hungry? It's been four months. No food is getting into the state. How long could you last? So these are the things that I think about um, when I think about, when I read the I'm concerned posts and we're very, we're very worried. And, you know, when you hear those kind of messages, I will say that the European Union has taken a much stronger stance. They have cut funding off to the state um, or to, to the country, to Ethiopia. Um, and the United States also has withheld some funds recently. Uh, it's not enough, though. We have to stop funding this genocide. We have to make sure that no money is getting into Ethiopia. We have to make sure that there are sanctions on both Ethiopia and Eritrea and that everyone is held accountable. But first and foremost, we have to stop the war. Slowly, surely, uh, the international community leadership, including the United States, um, are speaking out. Uh, this atrocity has been taking place almost more than 100 days. Uh, it's, you know... It's not too late, but of course, uh, there is a, a, a leadership transition in the United States. So uh, even 
talking about the Ethiopian issue uh, and the concern they have for the Tigran people. I think this is the right time. So uh, we have a statement from the official from White House and also from the State Department that they will um, pay attention very closely, but at the same time, they want the Ethiopian government to allow uh, the humanitarian assistance uh, to be able to do their job. It's insulting when the Ethiopian government says, you know, hashtag rebuild Tigray, hashtag Ethiopia will prevail. The, the rhetoric that's coming out of the Ethiopian government around Tigray and helping Tigrayans, it's like, I'm gonna break your legs to give you a wheelchair. It's really, really um, dumbfounding to see. Tigrayans will rebuild Tigray, no doubt about it, regardless of how the people decide to move forward. What most don't know or don't understand is that the way the constitution was built, um, there's an article 39 that allows nations within Ethiopia to go independent peacefully. So not in a war, not you know through conflict, but peacefully leave this nation called Ethiopia. And there's a reason for that. Ethiopia has a history of abusing its people. And so this was built into the constitution to give nations a right to um, go independent should they choose. I'm an American citizen. I don't get to make that choice for my family who still lives in Tigray, but they do get to make that choice. It's a part of the constitution. So we'll see what happens. I think there's a large, uh, there's momentum is swelling for that because Tigrayans are tired of being abused and they're tired of being neglected and they're tired of being seen as this other or less than um, in terms of how we, how we are dealt with within, within Ethiopia. For my people in Tigray, in Ethiopia, this is Tagaru, that are desperate for help, that are feeling hopeless. Um, I want them to know that we, Tigrayan Americans, Tagarus in the diaspora, particularly in the United States of America, we, we are hurt like they are. We feel their pain, but their pain is deeper than ours because they're actually, some of them are going to sleep, starving to death and they're dying, they're not waking up. I get all those pains, I get it. But you know what? We're not, we haven't forgotten them. We haven't forgotten you. We are fighting for you. We are you know, pushing, building. We have mounted enough pressure and built the ability for America and for the, to lead the world to take action. So we, I am hopeful to all the Tagars around the world that action is on its way, that we will see sooner or later that Tigray will be free from this atrocity and Tigray will become a nation and Tigray will be able to live side by side. And the one area that I briefly cover, but I want to emphasize is I want to like share my gratitude and my appreciation to all the Sudanese people around the world, but most importantly, the Sudanese people in Sudan, the government of Sudan for their generosity. So I say to all of you in Arabic, shukran.